In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use one of my all-time favorite photo editing apps. So stick around. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rocker Films, and in today's video, I'm talking all about VSEO. VSEO, or Visco as some people like to say, is a really powerful photo editing app for your phone. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I edit my photos using this app. So you want to begin by loading up the app. And when you do, you're going to be greeted by this interface. And this is where you can import your images. So if you don't have any images imported, then you can go ahead and do that right now. But I already have a bunch of images imported. So I'm going to select one of these to edit. And I'm going to start with this photo in the top right corner. So we press on this button and this brings us up to the filter tab. And we have all of these really cool filters. And as you can see, it's doing some really cool things here. So you've got some really cool effects, but personally, I like to use the same filter for all of my photos because I feel like it gives me a specific look. And my filter of choice is C8. So I'm going to select C8 and then I'm going to go across the tab on the right. And here you can see we have a variety of different controls. So we start off with the exposure and the exposure is basically a brightness control. So we can slide that from left to right and we can get that to a point where we're happy with. So roughly the there works for me. Next up we have contrast. You can either reduce this or pull this up. And this is basically adding a bit of contrast to your photo. You don't want to go too crazy on this. You just want to be nice and even with this. So I'm going to pump this up to plus one. We'll go across to adjust. And this is basically the rotation, the crop and the skew. And the skew is basically going to skew this into all sorts of weird, weird things. You want to be very careful when you're using that. It can help to fix an image if it's slightly skewed beforehand, but just be very light here, be very gentle. I'm going to go back into adjust and I'm just going to make sure that the horizon is nice and straight. And there we go. Next tab along is sharpen. And this is basically going to add some sharpening to your photo. This is really cool just to add a little bit of extra clarity, but don't go too crazy on this. If you go all the way up to 12%, then this is going to look really ugly. So keep this to a smaller number of around two, maybe three. And next up we have clarity, and this is really cool for bringing out some details in the shots, but you never want to use this on portraits and you want to be really careful when you're using this because too much clarity can look really ugly and really unprofessional. So, <clears throat> so just use clarity really sparingly. So I'm going to pull this to plus two. Next up we have saturation and I am addicted to bright colors. Obviously you can pull this all the way down and make this more black and white, but I'm addicted to color. So I like to pull this all the way up to around five. That's nice and colorful now. Next up we have HS and this is highlights and shadows. So we can adjust the highlights and we can adjust the shadows. And this is basically just going to adjust the exposure of each different setting. I'm just going to pull the highlights down a touch on this photo and I'm going to keep the shadows where they are because I don't want to increase the shadows. Next up is white balance and if we pull this top slider to the left, you can see we have a colder image. If we slide this to the right, we have a warmer image. Now, if you were taking a photo in the middle of the winter and you want it to look even more cold, then you can slide it to the left. If you want to make something look warm and sunny and rich, then you pull it across to the right. But for this photo, I'm just going to pull this across to the right an ever such small amount. And then as you can see, tint, we have green and purple. So slide that to wherever you want that to be. I'm just going to keep this in the middle there. Next up is skin tone. And this is really good if you're editing portraits or selfies because you can slightly adjust the skin tone. If your saturation has made you look a bit too orange and a bit too much like an Oompa Loompa, then you can go into skin tone and you can change the skin tone back to a more natural look. But obviously this is not a portrait, so we don't need to worry about that too much. And next up is the vignette. And this is basically going to add a soft border around the whole of the image. Pull this all the way up to 12 and you can see this is looking really insane. So be very gentle with this. I'm just going to use 1.2. Now, next up we have grain and grain is really cool because it can really help to stylize your photo. So if you pull this all the way up to 12, you can see that you've got this grain, you've got this noise in the photo. It looks cool, but it's a bit too much. So I like to pull this down to around 3.2, 3.4 maybe. So next up we have fade and pulling up on the fade is going to increase the brightness in the shadows. So if you remember a few settings ago, we had HS, highlights and shadows. When we pulled up the shadows, we have a very similar effect to what we have here in fade. So be very gentle with this. Don't go over the top here. Split toning is basically adding color to your highlights and your shadows. It's like the HS tab we had before, but instead of adjusting the exposure, we're adjusting the RGB color. So if you see shadows tints, I can add some orange, I can add some yellow, some green, some blue. 
Now I normally avoid this setting because it doesn't quite match up with my style, but if it looks good in your photos, then be creative with it and create some awesome photos with it. Next up we have borders, and this is really cool if you want to create an awesome looking Instagram feed. So if we go into borders and we'll select any color, so scroll across to green, as you can see, there is a green border added to the left and the right. And we can go through and we can change the color of this. Now, if you edit all of your photos with this border, when you upload these to Instagram, all of these borders are gonna to start to merge together and it's gonna look really awesome. Now, personally, I only post my phone photos to Instagram stories rather than my profile. So I don't need to worry about any borders. So I'm gonna come out of that setting and go to the last setting. And this one is really powerful. This is HSL. And this is where we can manipulate each individual color within the shot. So let's jump in with those blues. So we'll go across to the blue button and then we've got hue. So this is gonna change the color of the blue. So it's more of a green, pull it across so it's more of a dark blue. But I like to make this look more aqua. We can pull the saturation up or down. I like to pull this up a touch, but not too much because it looks unrealistic. And then we've got lightness as well. So I like to pull this up a small amount and there we go, I'm happy with that. And now we can jump in and we can edit the floor down in the bottom left corner. So it's a yellowish color. So we'll go into the orange to begin with and we'll adjust the saturation here. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit because that way the color of the blue in the water is gonna pop even more. Go into yellow, we'll do the same thing. So now that's all of the tools on the SEO, but there are two more buttons on the bottom bar that I need to talk about. Now the third button on the bottom tab is reverse tab. And this is where we can go through and we can delete specific effects or we can reduce the intensity of each different effect. And then lastly, at the very end, we have the preset tab. And this is where we can create custom made presets for our photos. And this means that rather than going through all of that editing process again for another image, you can just go into the preset tab, tap the preset, and there you go. You've got an amazing looking photo in a click. And then lastly, all we need to do is save this image. So in the top right, we can go save. This is gonna bring us back to our homepage and this is where all of the images are. Now selecting the image that you want to export, go to the tab in the bottom right, save to camera roll, and then you can choose how big you want this image to be, but I don't see the point of it being small, medium or large. You may as well make this to the original actual size. So press actual size, that's going to save, and there you go. That's how you edit an image in VSEO. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I will see you next time for the next video. Thank you for watching.